Hello, chess friends, and welcome to the of Chess Channel, and welcome back to our Hyper Accelerated Dragon Seed Sealand Defense series. So, in this series, I'm going to show you a very sharp and a very aggressive method how to beat e4. And uh, it's been a while since our last video uh, in our studies of the Hyper Accelerated Dragon Seed Sealand Defense. Uh, I basically stopped to analyze this opening because many of you um, started to really play this opening because of my videos, and I really uh, was glad when many of you have written to me that you there that you're feeling very well when you're playing the hyper accelerated ranks and ceiling defense but also um recently i've been asked now also to cover more lines uh, in the hyper accelerated ranks and ceiling defense and many of you have asked me this question how to play maybe against the so-called van ghetto opening which is very very annoying to play against uh it's his first move knight to c3 that white is playing still you can go into hyper accelerated ranks and ceiling defense ideas uh because uh, many of these openings um, don't have to necessarily start with the move e4 in order to maybe to reach the position maybe your opponent can choose a different move order but still we can uh, find uh, similar ideas or even the same ideas in the later stage of the game so that's why i still recommend you to go into hyper accelerated ranks utility methods against the van gate opening and in this video i wanted to show really some important lines that you have to know if you want to uh, study the hyper accelerated ranks utility defense but especially also if you want to have some kind of a counter play against the van gate opening so let's see now what is uh, the van get opening and how uh you should counterplay this ideas of white so here the first move is to move knight to c3 and basically it doesn't seem like um, an aggressive method it seems like a normal idea just to develop uh with the knight but actually what i never liked about um, the move knight to um, uh, c3 by white immediately is this method basically the best move that is also suggested by top engines is to move d5 but still i don't feel comfortable when i play this ideas of course after d4 knight to f6 and then we have reached maybe the yobaba london system and many times white is uh, trying to get the yobaba system out of the van gate opening he's trying to trick you with a different move order to reach this position so that's why i never liked uh, to play against the yobaba london system although uh, i had even good success but sometimes uh, just i don't feel well when i play this opening i'd like to play maybe then afterwards the king's indian structure with bishop to g7 then c5 knight to c6 and similar stuff but believe me or not this will be a very very unpleasant game to play it will be a very sharp and tactical game so uh that's why i like i like to play after move knight to c3 i like to go first into sort of a sicilian preparation and my opponent many times plays the move knight to f3 because he's developing of course first his knights he's delaying still his pawn move he still has a good control of the center so that's why i still like to go into this hyper accelerated rank sicilian style now um in one of my games that i played recently my opponent tried to move c takes the uh pardon me d4 and after c takes d4 he tried knight to d4 in my opinion the whole uh, idea about um, uh, the van gate opening is to actually recapture with the queen so we will cover also in the continuation of the video the queen to d4 line so actually in my opinion the main idea of the van gate opening is to simply get two knights into the game to get the queen very active into the game although uh, the queen can be a little bit kicked away and pushed away all over the board uh, in the later conti uh, continuation of the game but actually still you can always find good squares for the queen queen to h4 is an opportunity and then what actually white is trying to develop somewhere the bishop and then to castle queen side this is basically the whole idea the whole concept idea of the van gate opening so to get the queen out without playing the pawn moves without playing uh e4 uh, g3 without playing any uh, pawn moves further just to develop minor pieces uh, securing the king by castling on queen side and then uh, launch a flank attack maybe on the king side so that's why you have to be careful what you're doing so let's check out now first uh, this queen to, knight to d4 ideas uh, which are in my opinion much much worse uh, for white to play queen to d4 is in my opinion the most important line for white but okay here i wanted to show you one of my games i simply developed the bishop bishop to g7 bishop to e3 can be also an idea because uh, your opponent is trying to trade up further pieces and he's still trying to launch a flank attack after castle and queen side so here in the continuation knight to c6 uh, we have knight takes c6 after b takes c6 we have now this idea bishop to d4 and you see now 
And one of the main ideas when uh, white is playing against the Fianchetto is to trade off the darts for bishops, which is in some occasions perfectly fine. Bishop to g7, trading off bishops, uh, then launch, as we said, flank attack, h4, h5, queen to d2, queenside castling. Well, it would be similar uh, if you have followed my channel so far and we have covered the so-called Yugoslav attack against the Drang Sicilian defense. Uh, it will be similar, of course, not the same, but like the common Yugoslav attack against the Fianchetto bishop, against the dragon bishop uh, in the Sicilian. But uh, this move bishop to d4 is a little bit too rushed. Still, you can kick it away with the move e5, bishop to c5, then uh, the e5 could an opportunity, and then after knight to e7 to simply secure the king by casting. But what I never liked um, about this line, although this is also the suggested line by the engine, is that actually I have to play the f towards the move knight to e7 uh, in similar stuff, and then I don't have the knight on f6. And the knight on f6 is controlling the h5 square many times, so white is trying then to launch h4 h5 attacks and then i don't have a protector of h5 so that's why i like to stay more close uh, uh closer to the king here with the move knight to f6 and then uh, i would have a further control of the h5 so that's why uh i tried simply different lines after move bishop to d4 i simply developed the knight on f6 so my opponent still tries the same ideas here he's trying knight to e4 he's trying uh to trade off more pieces he's trying to simplify the game and then uh, as we said queen to d2 queen side casting and launch a flank attack but again i simply played the counter attack here rook to b8 because it's necessary now to include all of the pieces into the game because uh his b2 to pawn is also um, a weakness in the continuation of the game and if of course something like b3 happens in the near future not immediately because because of course uh, the knight is hanging uh, then um we could try, of course, knight to e4, bishop to g7, but not with queen to a5. Uh, the game is basically over. So this is something that white should not do. So that's not the point. Actually, the whole point about the move b3 is actually that you're provoking so, too many weaknesses, even in, in the later state of the game, even if you play b3 afterwards. So a3, c3, b2 are simply structural weaknesses. And that's exactly what we want to get out of the opening. And now, for instance, after potential b3, if you could just imagine... Uh, the position a little bit later with the move b3 and if then white castles queenside with such a structural weakness uh, on b3 uh, you could get smashed queen to a5 queen to a3 could sneak in so uh, again the dark score problems also could cause many many uh, uh, positional problems here for for white so that's why white needs to be careful here in this game my opponent tried again to simplify the game too much and he tried now queen to d4 again preparing queenside casting but like, actually this is not working anymore because of the check and from this point on actually black is much much better you could of course try uh, here queen to d2 queen takes king takes and now after rook takes b2 uh, in my opinion this is simply completely winning endgame here for, for black so that's why here he, my opponent tried c3 to stay somehow into the game here he tried uh, to cover himself but I simply took the pawn and after queen to f6 I castle simply king side and okay maybe uh, still I'm vulnerable a little bit here to the attacks h4 h5 but actually it's not the problem because uh, here my opponent is already losing the tactical battle around the score c3 uh this flank attack is simply too slow so i solved now all of the positional problems here my opponent tried rook to c1 i simply took we have here uh, e4 i tried rook to e8 attacking the um attacking the pawn bishop to d3 my opponent is trying now to desperately ca castling securing the king by castling i tried bishop to uh, a6 because if bishop to a6 then a queen to a6 and uh here again the game is simply lost tactically uh again uh here around the square e2 here my opponent tried uh c4 and i just sacrificed the rook just into uh simply t uh create this check rook to e2 uh here after king to f1 i simply took the bishop and now also this pawn will be taken and here also the threat is of course queen to e2 followed with queen to e1 would be also checkmate uh here you notice that this rook is not playing in the game the rook is basically useless maybe my opponent can try of course a check but it's only one check uh perpetuals are not possible here for for white so that's why in the continuation of the game my opponent tried to escape but now i simply play queen to d2 in this position uh in this position white resigned okay okay you could maybe try queen to a1 but now with rook to f4 we're continuing the pressure here even if you cover then bishop to c4 and it's game over so as i said this is a really bad method by 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 white let's go back if your opponent is trying 
to trade too many pieces i think in an early stage of the game because we can notice he played already bishop to e3 took then again and again uh, he played twice three times with the same piece it's not good to play like this because you have seen uh i simply developed the pieces for the rook to be eight he has weaknesses because uh when he took the pawn uh, when he took the knight on c6 of course the b file is open and you should never forget in sicilians when that happens after uh, b takes c6 that you have actually uh really good fun here on the b file then queen to a5 is also a method so don't forget about your activities you will have also counter plays although um, your opponent maybe can try these ideas but as i said this is simply too slow uh still he uh, we can include more attackers into the game if he tries b3 as we said he creates simply too many weaknesses now in the position we can always try queen to a5 trade off the queens d5 bishop to e6 then include maybe the king into the game so uh in my opinion this is simply not working here for white so i wanted to show you a really beautiful game that was played by by Janne Pomiaci uh, against uh, Dmitry Andrejkin uh, where of course Dmitry Andrejkin, uh, Andrejkin a much much better uh, player and a great attacker tried this queen to d4 method out of the Van Gate opening again I'm pointing out if you have found maybe some ideas that are working for you in the Van Gate opening try them out it's perfectly fine it's simply one of my methods that i like to play in order to beat this very annoying opening so as i said uh if you're playing d5 nothing wrong after move knight to c3 if you're playing still d5 and you're familiar with the strategies and the tactics that come uh, come out of this opening it's perfectly fine it's still uh the suggested method here also by top engines and also probably by top grand masters but as i said i wanted to introduce you these ideas with the move c5 because i feel comfortable simply when i play the hyper accelerated rank Sicilian by myself so as i said maybe it's it's working also for you so after move uh, c5 knight to f3 uh, here and can also tried this two knight uh, variation sort of we have a g6 also by uh, by uh young nepomniashi we have d4 c takes d4 and c now uh queen to d4 now after move knight to f6 here we have knight to e4 and again this method to create some kind of a madness here around the square f6 actually uh the main idea is here to play simply queen to h4 this is a clear idea because what we want now to play here from white's perspective to move bishop to h6 but don't worry you just continue development even if bishop to h6 happens uh, then you could try here queen to h4 and if your opponent is trying you have to bring your pieces out because obviously you're not going to castle anymore on the queen side that's something that you have to notice i think here in this types of variation you're not going to uh castle anymore maybe you can try d6 bishop to uh, e6 and then castle queen side uh that's the only way to secure the king on or in some occasions you will be even forced to stay with the king in the center so now uh here after move queen to a5 if your opponent is trying uh maybe here uh this idea a bishop to f8 then still rook to f8 and even if he tries maybe his pressure uh here around the square uh g uh, g5 then you can of course place also some counter ideas you can play here knight to uh, d5 uh, this is also very unpleasant here for your opponent so your opponent hasn't solved all of his positional problems he has also some worries so it's already um uh, almost a winning game here for uh for black so even if uh if maybe this bishop to h6 idea happens you could also try here bishop to h6 immediately it's uh, not a problem queen to h6 and then still with queen to h5 you uh, queen to a5 you have a uh, good counter plays you have uh, some ideas of knight to e4 knight to d5 and basically uh white is also forced uh here to castle queen side and uh maybe then afterwards you could launch a flank attack a6 b5 so it's also an unpleasant game for white so as i said maybe you will get challenged with the move queen to h4 bishop to h6 but don't worry uh you can always get out of the mess and uh as i said the most important move here is to move queen to a5 which is creating a counter attack control is also the fifth rank uh, which is also something that we have to notice and also creates some breeding spaces for the king maybe as i said with the move d6 bishop to e6 and queen side casting you can also secure the king on this side of the board so here um, uh, in this game after move knight to f6 andre can try knight to e4 uh, we have bishop to g7 and now bishop to uh, g5 you see again 
white is trying this battle around the square f6 what you should not do is this idea knight to h5 many times i've seen this tactical shot that's uh, losing immediately uh, here for black because uh, now you have a stunning tactic here for white knight to d6 so don't do that uh, many times i've done the same believe it or not i lost the game because of this tactic knight to d6 uh, what you should do is of course you cannot take um, uh, here because you lose the queen simply uh, queen to e4 and then uh, you cannot cover it anymore so uh, it comes with a check or, or you can do maybe here to escape but again it's not working because of this idea uh, queen to c4 so you see now with queen to c4 queen to e4 white has uh, good chances here and now we have a attack against the weak f7 square so it's game over even if you try e6 to cover this the, then of course you lose the queen so don't do that uh, many times as i said i've seen this idea knight to h5 but it's simply not working knight to d6 is losing the game immediately so here after move bishop to g5 uh, uh jan nepomne she tried of course knight to c6 attacking simply the queen we have queen to c3 here andrekin is trying to stay on this diagonal because if something like this happens he wants of course to take the bishop so uh that's why uh here uh, jan nepomne she simply castled we have now bishop to f6 if you try of course knight to f6 then of course e takes f6 comes with the tempo you have to move somewhere the bishop and then with the f5 again uh, black has really some fun black is here really a beautiful beautiful activity notice that uh, in this uh, van gate opening white is uh, has not played so far with the light for bishop still needs to play one two moves maybe three moves just in order to secure the king by casting i think black is much much faster in development so uh, with the move d5 then maybe bishop to e6 maybe even d4 uh, uh, white could have also some problems in the continuation of the game but okay here after move uh, queen to c3 king side casting as we said bishop to f6 was played here after e takes f6 now andre can try knight to d6 and okay it seems so that maybe something went wrong here for uh jan nepomneshi because he has now uh, this very annoying knight on d6 but in my opinion the bishop's activity here on g7 is now something that bothers now white through the whole game because here f5 simple move of course by uh, jan nepomneshi getting use of the diagonal and this bishop on on g7 is becoming now the best piece on the board so now you see uh, as i said first of all white loses another tempo with the queen and then still has to play i don't know e3 bishop to e2 kingside castle queenside castle who knows if you castle queenside then i think you're uh, getting uh, you're running simply into black's attack so you're casting will already this bishop is aiming so it's it's i think not good here so queen to b3 uh, queen to a3 was played by um andreken and now b5 b5 really beautiful move here by um you know, because he has noticed of course that white could maybe castle on the queen side so that's why you want to be fast on the attack uh knight to b5 if happens then of course we can play simply rook to b8 and it's tar you see now we have now clear target it's now the weak pawn on b7 uh, b2 pardon me now the tactical battle will be probably lost around the square so this is something that you should not do uh here a6 then afterwards is of course an opportunity to just open the b file so here the continuation after move b5 e3 was played by andrekin we have b4 queen to b3 and now queen to f6 look how uh the battery is working now uh here for for black in the continuation we have now queen side casting and now uh a5 and you can guess uh um who is better here of course because the 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 flank attack that black is creating now the activity of uh this battery is simply too much to handle the bishop can be included in the game and if for instance black try uh black get challenged with mo this move knight to c8 then of course rook to c8 okay you could maybe take one pawn but now with a4 uh, b3 a3 i'm not sure uh this position will be open simply too much and it's game over we can use of course the c file also as an attacking uh, setup so it's simply game over so here in the continuation we had the a4 by andreikin he's trying to stop the progress but of course b takes a3 Ampassan, we have queen to a3 and now rook to b8 uh, attacking further the b2 weakness so from this point on 
uh, why it is strategic a lot so as i said i wanted to uh, show you a couple more moves because many mistakes were played afterwards but i think we can agree um, uh, that this is a perfect setup for black this is not something that white should do here c3 was played and as i said many mistakes were played so basically this uh, value of the game is not now the tactical sequence that will happen uh the value of this game i think is this uh first of all this uh, opening theory that uh, Jan de Pomeshi applied uh that he showed us how to play uh the van gate opening from black's perspective with this hyper accelerated ranks and ceiling method uh now as i said he has a comfortable game and whenever you have this opposite side attack games it's just simply time to open the position if queen to a4 happens then of course rook to b2 for instance is a possibility king to b2 and then queen to c3 leads into check me so this is something that bothers the white through the whole game you should as i said the whole concept here is just to open files open diagonals uh even if you have to sacrifice maybe one pawn two pawns even three pawns you can sacrifice sometimes but just in order to have a great piece activity so in the continuation we had bishop to c4 and they can try to include the bishop into the game knight to uh, a5 attacking the bishop we had now finally queen to a4 and now knight to c4 queen to c4 and now rook to uh, rook to a8 which was now basically the first mistake that the young Pomerci did here a better idea was simply to play bishop to b7 and trying to get rid of this annoying knight on f3 which could maybe be useful here around the square d4 because then of course if knight to d4 happens then suddenly the dark square diagonal is locked so as i said many mistakes were played but i really loved the game because of the fact that uh young Pomerci played really beautiful opening game here after move queen to uh d5 was played we should be a six we have now rook to uh a rook to d4 and now very interesting idea here by Jan Pomerci bishop to uh bishop to f1 decoying the rook to f1 and now after a rook to a1 suddenly again the game was lost here for uh for white so as i said after a couple more moves uh andre can resign then Jan Pomerci won the game but let's go back as i said uh here the main line uh would be something like after move uh, a d4 so as we said c takes d4 queen to d4 uh will be played many many times now you play knight to f6 uh here if knight to e4 happens we have seen bishop to g7 is perfectly fine but if you get challenged here with this idea queen to uh queen to h4 then you just play knight to c6 normal development you're waiting you don't want to play first bishop to g7 because you have lost then a tempo with the bishop then you get bishop to uh uh h6 and again you have to play with the bishop now uh, knight after knight to c6 notice that we didn't play with the bishop so you don't lose that extra tempo now after move bishop to h6 you can also play bishop to h6 queen to h6 and then queen to uh, uh queen to uh, a5 from this point on i think you could have a decent game e3 uh now you could try b5 d6 uh, uh bishop to e6 uh, securing the king queenside castling and i think you could have a decent game so as i said uh, this is a method how to beat the van gate opening try it out maybe if if it's working for you of course there are many many sidelines that you could face be careful uh white has also decent ideas here it's a very very dynamic uh, game so as i said don't make this common mistakes i think in the beginning and you could have uh, some kind of a good preparation so okay i hope that you enjoyed the study if you want to see more about hyper accelerated dragons and still in the fest check out my whole playlist uh on that playlist we have already covered some different ideas and different possibilities for white and for black and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel See you soon with some more videos and chess is the best, of course.